Good evening. Good evening and welcome to tonight's introduction to MHS Athletics event. I recognize a lot of faces here tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andy Trudell. I'm the Athletic and Activities Director here at McGuanago High School. This is our first time uh, running this, this event or this type of event and we're hopeful uh, that it'll be beneficial. Uh, we're, we're thinking it'll lessen some of the confusion uh, when it comes to uh, registration and things of that nature uh, for McGuanago Athletics. Hopefully provide some valuable information for you uh, and answer some of the questions uh, that you may have. This presentation that's up on the, on the screen uh, as well as a video of tonight's event will be available on our website, so no need to take notes. Uh, if you if you're just follow along, uh, if there's something that you uh, thought you remember one of us saying and you want to want to see what that is, you can absolutely go to uh, either of those sources uh, for that information. <clears throat> I'd also like to ask you to save your questions till the end. Um, at the conclusion of this, we're going to do some breakout sessions for our fall sports. And one of the groups will be uh, myself in the athletic office, myself and my assistant, Mrs. Wernus, who you'll meet in a few minutes. I will have a table out in the a foyer area here by all means come up and, and ask all the questions that you may have at that time. It'll speed us along. I'm aware that there's a uh, jazz concert tonight uh, that some of you uh, may have a son or daughter participating in uh, that starts at 7 o'clock uh, and we will certainly be uh, done well before then. So the order of uh, tonight's events, we're going to start with registration. That's probably the, the, the biggest thing that we want you to take away from here, being confident in knowing how to register your son and daughter uh, for athletics uh, next school year. We're going to talk briefly about the Athletic Code of Conduct. I'm going to show you where to, how to utilize our website uh, to find things like coaching information, uh, scheduling, uh, our, web, our uh, team websites. Uh, I'm going to have a couple different uh, teachers talk about uh, some of the classes that we offer that supplement our athletic programs in the PE department, uh, as well as a leadership class uh, that we're beginning uh, next school year. Share some information with you about getting involved uh, as parents, uh, whether that be in the Booster Club uh, or FOMO, which stands for Friends of Athletic or uh, Friends of McGuanico, uh, Athletics. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about ticketing, uh, how you purchase tickets uh, to come to events here, uh, as well as our live stream information and a few other odds and ends. And then again, at the end of the night, we'll, we'll do some breakouts uh, for our various fall sports so those coaches can uh, share with you what's gonna be happening coming really soon uh, in August. Uh, uh, those seasons will be here uh, before you know it. So again, the first uh, thing that we'd like to go through is our athletic uh, registration uh, and our guru uh, for our registration process is my assistant, uh, Mrs. Jen Wernus. So welcome, Jen. I'd like to thank all of you for coming tonight. I know it's busy. Um, but first things first, when you're going to register, do not do it before July 1st. I think I've had probably a dozen eighth graders try and register for football already. So if you've done that, you're going to have to redo it because our system rolls over July 1st. Um, and there is everything online. You don't have to turn any paperwork in. It's very straightforward. When you're registering, the system will only allow um, one account per athlete. So let's say this year mom goes in to register her child, sets everything up, and then next year dad tries to go in and start a new account. It will not let you do that. It goes by the student ID that you will find in Infinite Campus. So if you do run into that issue and you forgot your ID or your password, you can call me and we can reset it. That just prevents um, me from having to go through 10 accounts with the same student. So try and keep track of the user ID and the password. Um, and then you can add subsequent um, to subsequent years, if you have more students, you just add them underneath that same account. So it's basically like a family account. Um, and then when you go in to register, so if your child's going to play football, basketball, and baseball, you can click all those boxes, and then you're done for the year. So you don't have to go in before each season, re-register them, figure it out, you can do it all at once. 
Now I get a lot of questions that my child was going to play baseball and then decided not to. It's okay. You can still click that box and if they change your mind, you can just let me know. The big thing is physicals. It's a WIAA rule that the physical for next year has to be on or after April 1st of 2022. And that can be uploaded into the registration or you can drop it off in my office and I'll upload it for you. Um, that has to be turned in along with the registration prior to tryouts, practices, or games. So if you show up for volleyball tryouts and you don't have either the registration or the physical in, you will not be able to try out. The forms can be found on our athletic page. They can also be found on the athletic registration. <coughs> so when you're going through and you get to the physical page, there's going to be a little link that says, I'm actually I'm not sure what it says, I think it says physical form. You can download that, and if you don't have the form, that's okay. You can continue to go through the registration. You'll know you're done when you electronically sign and your student electronically signs. Once those two are done, you can submit it, and then it comes to me. I will then either okay it because everything's in or I'll send you something that says it's pending because they don't have the physical. So either way, you're going to get a response from me. If you don't get a response, that means something didn't go right. You can call me and we can work through that. Um, the biggest thing, and I can't stress this enough, is that the physical and registration has to be done before the first day of the trials. No exceptions. That allows my coaches to know that everything's done and they can coach your kids instead of trying to figure out who needs what and who's going to be turned in. Um, I keep a very detailed Google Doc that I share with my coaches so they know what I know anytime they look at it. Um, next page, I'm just going to kind of show you where you can go. So this is our athletic page on the Mugwanabo High School website. Right down here at the bottom where it says online athletic registration, that's the link you you click to get to the registration. It is not on Infinite Campus. It's something totally different. So when you click that, it will bring you to this page, and then you click the icon, and that's when you can start. So if you have an account already, you can sign in from there, or you can start um, an account from that page. Um, it's very straightforward. Once you put the information in, it's really nice because it keeps it from year to year, so you don't have to upload everything, and it keeps it from student to student. If you have any questions, just call me and we'll work through it. So now we're going to go through, we're actually going to go to the website and look at a, a couple things. Um, to get to our website, you go to uh, our MASD, it's a live link here. Once you're there, uh, you go to the schools drop down, I'll show you in a minute. Go to the schools drop down, you select McWanago High School, then you select activities, uh, and then you select uh, athletics. So we're going to go to that uh, website now. This is the district website, uh, most of you are probably familiar with it already. Again, to get to the athletics page, you go to schools, McGuanago High School, and then activities. And once you're here, you have two options. Uh, I'm going to point this out even though we're not going to go there, but um, if you go to the activities page, uh, you will learn about all of the different uh, clubs uh, and groups uh, that we have, non-athletic uh, uh, groups that we offer here at McGuanago High School. So you want to get involved in a key club or Decker or things of that nature, you can learn about it, everything there learn who the advisors are. So just wanted to point that out. Since we're on athletics tonight, we're going to click on the athletics portion, and this is going to bring up that uh, page that Jen just shared with you. Uh, this is our home page uh, for the athletics. She just went through uh, athletic participation requirements. Again, it's right here, online uh, athletic registration. If I click on that, it's going to bring me to that icon that she said as far as registering uh, your son or daughter. Uh, for McQuantico Athletics. As she said, and I just want to stress this, prior to your first practice, uh, we need to have this registration completed in a physical on file. Uh, a couple years ago, I recall um, a, a couple of, of athletes who were in our office, 
in early August, first day of tryouts uh, for volleyball, actually, at the time. Uh, and the, we didn't have a physical on file for these two girls, and, and they're sobbing in our office because tryouts are going right now, uh, and they need to be in tryouts to make the team. But we can't allow, uh, allow you to participate if we don't have that physical on file from a liability standpoint. So I just want to reiterate that again to make sure you get your registration done uh, and make sure that you have your, uh, your physical completed. The user fee um, is $150 uh, for the year. It used to be $100 per sport, and then there was a cap, a family cap, but now it's $150 uh, per athlete per year. So if you play two sports, it's $150. It used to cost you $200. Uh, if you play three, it's still $150. Uh, so we did that a couple years ago. Uh, people seem to uh, seem to appreciate that. The next thing uh, that I want to talk about, and, and not my uh, favorite topic by any stretch of the imagination, but is the athletic code of conduct. So when you sign uh, in your registration, uh, you acknowledge uh, that you've read the athletic code of conduct. All of our athletes need to sign this. And again, it's part of your registration uh, that you're signing off that you've read the code of conduct. Um, I encourage you to take the time to actually read it, students uh, as well as parents, uh, so you're informed uh, as to what is in there. I'm not going to go through it all. Um, if you look here, it's 11 pages long, uh, and we would, uh, we would certainly put you to sleep if we read through the whole thing. Uh, but I definitely want to just go through some highlights, uh, some things that maybe uh, people aren't 100% familiar with, uh, just so uh, you've heard it at least uh, from me. The first thing is that the code um, is year-round. So once you sign that code, whether you're in season or out of season, you're held accountable uh, for your actions and you're expected to uh, act like a McGuanago High School athlete. Part of the code, and it says right here on the, on the first page, um, is that when student athletes sign uh, the code, they are subject to uh, random drug testing that we do at McGuanago High School. So once a month, uh, we randomly select 10 students uh, to, to take a drug test. We actually don't do it, Pro Healthcare comes in. Uh, every student who's an athlete gets a number, and then also the students who use our parking lots, uh, they also have to sign the, uh, the random drug testing piece. So every kid gets a number, Pro Healthcare comes in and they select 10 numbers, just randomly, and then the, the uh, AP office calls those kids down and they, they take a drug test on the spot. Uh, we have had kids uh, test positive for various things. Uh, it, even, it even finds traces of alcohol. Um, and when that happens, that's a code violation. So I want you to be aware uh, of, that, of that piece. Um, there's an academic requirement uh, in here. Our academic requirement, some schools have multiple. They have their own policy uh, as well as the WIA policy. We simply follow the WIA policy. Um, makes it really easy to be eligible. Uh, basically, if you don't have more than one F in the last grading period, you are eligible to participate uh, in athletics. That's our academic standard. So if you have two Fs, you're ineligible. It's a 15, day, uh, 15 school day ineligibility period, and then we do a grade recheck at that time. But again, uh, no more than one F, um, you're good to go from an academic standpoint. Uh, as you read through the code, you'll notice the, the major offenses, um, obviously drugs and alcohol, vaping, uh, our number one code violation right now, and it's not even close, uh, is vaping. Um, we have multiple vaping uh, violations uh, each year. It's a, it's a bit of a, not just a McGuanago issue, but it's a, a bit of an epidemic um, <clears throat> nationally uh, with the vape, whether it be nicotine or the THC vape. Um, our kids are messing with that stuff, and it's it's not a good thing. Um, it certainly doesn't uh, doesn't help you from an athletic standpoint. That's for sure. Uh, other than uh, drugs, alcohol, vaping, um, <clears throat> images uh, on social media. Uh, it's another area where we get a lot of code violations. Where kids like to pose uh, with certain things, like a beer can or whatever, um, put it on Instagram or Snapchat, or, uh, and then all of a sudden, one of their friends, who's not really their friend, sends it to me. Uh, and guess what? We got an athletic code violation. And our code specifies uh, possession or use. So if you're holding it, that's possession. Uh, that is a, a, a code violation. Uh, criminal behavior, getting in trouble with the police. Uh, that's another thing that uh, is, a, is an athletic code violation. And then school suspensions. 
if you get suspended from school, we have one day, two day, and three day suspensions. I think we might even have some longer suspensions than that. A three day suspension is, a, is an athletic code violation. A one or two day suspension, uh, we're still gonna suspend you from a game or two, uh, but it's not a full uh, athletic code violation. And then in our code, a, a unique thing that we have, um, maybe some of you have heard this saying, those who host uh, lose the most. And basically what that says is if you host an underage uh, party where either drugs or alcohol are being consumed, uh, that student athlete uh, has their punishment doubled, whoever the host uh, athlete is, uh, to try to discourage, obviously, those types of, of activities. Uh, our punishments are third, the first violation is 30% of a season. So if your season is 10 games long, uh, you sit out three. If your, game's, if your season's 20 games, uh, you'd sit out six of those games. Uh, second violation is 60%, and then third violation is a, is a death sentence. Uh, it's a lifetime ban uh, from McGuanago Athletics. I haven't had many of those over the year, years, thankfully. And then if you have a code violation, the other unique thing is we have a reinstatement policy. Uh, one, to, to get reinstated, you have to be in good standing, which means you showed up for all the practices, the games, and the things like that while you were on suspension. You didn't get to play, but you were still there supporting your teammates. You verbally apologize to your teammates. So coach brings you together and, and you get a chance to talk to your teammates and explain what you did and, and why it was wrong and how you're not gonna let them down again. And then lastly, you write a letter to me uh, requesting a reinstatement and then I confirm uh, that those uh, <clears throat> details were, were handled and that you are, again, eligible uh, for athletics. We go back to the website here. That's the, the code of conduct again. It's the happiest uh, uh, topic, but I thought I would uh, point out some things that are important. Next thing I'd like to show you um, is schedules. There's two different links here, but if you go here, athletic schedules, if you're just wondering, hey, what's going on in McGuanago High School tonight, I see a bunch of cars, uh, you can go here. This is our, our full uh, schedule for the week. Um, today's a bad day. Uh, rain has canceled tennis, canceled baseball. Playing soccer because they're soccer and golfers are out there getting after it. Uh, but so a few baseball games and soccer uh, uh, tennis matches are canceled. So you got the daily schedules. But the other nice thing you can do is you can click this view schedules here and you can pick a sport. Uh, let's say your son is playing varsity baseball. Click on varsity baseball and then go down here to view. And it's going to pull up the entire uh, schedule for you. Most of your coaches are going to get you copies of, of your schedule at the start of the season and your sons and daughters are really reliable and they're going to bring that home and make sure you have it. But if for some reason you don't, uh, you have this option as well. All right. Uh, some of the teams also have websites. You can go there and get their schedules, but uh, I thought I would point that uh, this little feature out for you. The next thing on here, um, Teams and coaches, if you're wondering who the coach is for a, very, uh, for a different sport, uh, you're going to meet the fall coaches today. Um, but maybe you're a, a basketball player, a girls basketball player, you're actually going to meet Coach Witte here in a minute. Uh, but you want to know who the coach is, uh, you can slide over here to, to Coach Witte. Uh, and then the websites for, for the teams. Not everybody has a website, uh, but a lot of the, the sports do. Uh, football's website, you click on the website here. Just a second. Uh, they just just updated there. It's pretty uh, pretty nice website. Really user friendly. Uh, there's the, there's there is their schedule uh, for next year. A uh, little nicer looking than what I showed you from the from the website. Um, but again, our website has has a lot of uh, good information in it. Um, and, and hopefully, me going through that uh, with you um, will help you uh, to find some of those things. At this time, I'd like to uh, turn it over to um, Coach Ganebach, who's going to talk to you a little bit about our PE offerings and how some of those offerings uh, help with our athletic program. All right, welcome. So, uh, within our schedule, our daily schedule, we offer a weights class every single period throughout the schedule. Uh, and the block schedule that we currently have, we meet three times a week. So, 
Uh, our largest one that we have right now, it's our advanced weights course. Next year there are 431 students signed up for advanced weights alone. Uh, so that's over 25% of our entire student body is signed up for our advanced weights class. Uh, we also have a beginning weights class and a personal life fitness class that also meets in our fitness center. So we uh, encourage our athletes in, in, regardless of sport, we encourage our athletes to take uh, our classes uh, because what that allows is our student athletes to be multi-sport and it also uh, does not interfere with their current season. All right, so we don't have to bring them in early before school and obviously then after school they can do their sport. They don't have to train. Uh, we train 12 months out of the year uh, and we lift on game days. Uh, you can pick any sport uh, within our schedule. If, if I just look back to our football season, we were doing heavy doubles. Like at 90% of our match, we were doing heavy doubles the day of the state finals. Uh, our wrestlers, the day of team state, were doing heavy doubles. Again, uh, we lift year round and therefore we are never sore. Uh, and our kids continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger throughout the sports season, obviously throughout the calendar. Um, now, in order to be an advanced weights class, you have to do one of two things. The first thing that uh, you would have to take a beginning weights class in order to get into the advanced weights class. However, we have kind of uh, fast-tracked that. And uh, in order to get into advanced weights course as a freshman, you have to be in our Indian Athletic Performance class throughout the summer, which is a six-week summer-long course. Uh, you can sign up for that now on Infinite Campus. It is open, and it is still open, and it will remain open. So uh, I know with me being uh, the, the head football coach, I have sent out some, some reminders uh, to, to have, make sure that students and athletes are signing up for the uh, Indian Athletic Performance. Now, the session for the incoming ninth graders is 9 to 11, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, we have three-day weekends every single weekend throughout the summer, but 9 to 11 would be the session that they would sign up for in the summer. Uh, we, if I just, most uh, incoming freshmen have already signed up for the advanced weights course as well, because uh, we're doing scheduling right now, and uh, we pretty much have everything, uh, everything signed off on that. But uh, again, just wanted to get up and, and, and kind of talk about, you know, the rationale behind it. We lift during the school day. It's a great opportunity um, for the students. We are completely, uh, like, we have right now, currently, I think there's 126 girls in class alone. So we have two full sections of just girls in class. So uh, we are getting more and more people uh, aboard this. Uh, coaches are, are totally on board. Uh, and it's only going to make our athletic programs bigger or, and better. So um, I can answer any questions uh, regarding that right now since some of you guys will be leaving. And, and if, if you have any, uh, go ahead and ask if I didn't. Go ahead. You're saying it's a six-week program? The summer. That is okay. That's no. You're, you're, that is okay. You you have to be in for you know a minimum of four in order to get credit for that uh, for the the advanced weight scores. Good question. Anybody else? Because we do take attendance every day for that um, and into the campus. All right. Thank you for your time. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Coach Witte, and I just want to first echo what Coach Kahneman was saying. I'm a varsity girls basketball coach, and I know we've got some other female coaches here as well, uh, coaches on the female side. If you have daughters and they're coming to Quantico High School, get them into the weight room. Uh, it is definitely a place where everyone gets stronger, and that's something we want to keep building. And I'm here to talk a little bit about a class that we have developed and starting next Next year, you know, Coach Ganeva talked about our, how we physically train our athletes. 
They're going to get in the weight room. They're going to learn how to move their body properly to prevent injury. They're going to learn how to get stronger. These are all life skills that extend beyond any sport your, your kid's going to play. And here at McQuantico High School, we want to train athletes. We want to train competitors. We want them to compete. We want them to win. Absolutely. Uh, but we also want them to be great humans. We think at McQuantico High School, that's a very great life skill. It's a great life skill in and of itself. And so something we want to do is uh, make sure we're training the mental side of sport as well. And to that end, we've got this course called the Leaders Mindset. And it, uh, Coach said it's like 450 students signed up for weights next year. And in our first year, we have around 250 students signed up for uh, our Leaders Mindset classes. That's how much our, our coaches have gotten behind, behind Mr. Trudell, Trudell's leadership, this experience for kids. And so in this course, the Leaders Mindset will have tools for students if they want to use them to be uh, sort of intentional about the conversations they're having with themselves, the conversations they're having with others, because we want our student athletes to be leaders. And this course is not just for athletes, by the way, it's for any students. We want our students to be leaders, and leaders add value, no matter where they're at. I see some of you would cheer off that sound, I see some basketball players here, football players, soccer players, it doesn't matter. Court, field, turf, we want our leaders to add value. It could be on the community at large as well. Or in the school, in the PAC, the cafeteria, the hallway, at church, anywhere else. We want our students to be leaders, and leaders add value. And so we have this course, again, called the Leaders Mindset, offered to anybody, by the way. So I know registration for class has already begun and, and closed, and if your student's not in a Leaders Mindset as a freshman, that's fine. It's offered freshman to senior year. Again, like I said, it's got all of our coaches that are going to be funneling students into this class. We want our athletes into this class. And if you have students who aren't athletes, we want them in the class as well. This is where students have the opportunity to connect on, uh, on stuff like this. So if you have any questions about this course, you know, I'll stick around here after. I don't want to take any more time. I don't know if Coach is going to do a fall session. Uh, but we appreciate you all coming out this evening. We look forward to working with you and your families uh, next year. Thank you. Booster Club president, uh, Mr. Thornton, uh, here tonight, but uh, he had Golf League, which uh, trumped this event. So uh, I'll share a little bit about the Booster Club as well as, as FOMA. Um, some schools have uh, Booster Clubs for all of their different sports. Uh, they may have a uh, quarterback's club for the, the football team or uh, a wrestling uh, booster club uh, for the wrestling program. We do an all sport. Uh, booster program where we fund, we, we raise money, we fundraise together as one uh, large uh, athletic community. Uh, the major fundraisers uh, that the Booster Club does is their golf outing. Uh, the golf outing is, is an annual outing uh, in July this year. It's July 12th uh, at Edgewood Golf Course in, in Big Bend. Um, 280 some golfers, I believe, they get annually. A uh, fantastic uh, day of, of golf and, and uh, fundraising. Uh, they do a solar salt sale twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall, uh, where they have uh, volunteer adults who drive pickup trucks, and then some of our student athletes hop in those trucks, and they go deliver solar salt that they sold, and the, the folks who buy the salt love it because our kids carry the stuff down in the basement for them. Um, we'll have uh, people order eight to ten bags, uh, so they're stocked up for the year, and they, and they don't have to lug those things up and down the stairs because our athletes uh, do that for them. And then their other fundraiser is the Village Run. Um, that's the, the traditional name, the Village Run. This year it's, it's the McGuanagall Mile, uh, and they're going to run it on uh, Father's Day, uh, uh, the Father's Day Parade. Right before the parade, they're going to run uh, the uh, McGuanagall Mile and the parade route. Uh, so kind of a cool idea if you're a runner. Um, even if you're not a runner, it's a mile. Uh, so if you're interested in that, um, just, a, just a neat event. Uh, this year, currently, we have over 200 members uh, in the Booster Club, uh, and it's just parents, uh, families who sign up uh, to be members. Uh, the, the dues are $40 uh, to be in the Booster Club, so not a huge, uh, a huge financial uh, burden. Uh, you get a few freebies with that, uh, which is nice. Uh, they meet on the third Wednesday of each month, but the meetings are only for one rep per sport. 
so just because you sign up to be a booster club member doesn't mean you have to attend all the meetings that's not the case at all uh, you're, you're signing up to be a booster member uh, to help uh, financially fund uh, some of our programs and then each year uh, the boosters give anywhere from 3,000 to about 3,500 sometimes as much as 4,000 uh, per sport uh, per year so they raise a lot of money uh, they spend it all uh, on our kids which is which is a fantastic thing uh, the websites there that's live on this uh, on this link as well and Zach wanted me to hit escape here and uh, go back to the uh, slideshow because that bothers him that it wasn't full screen um, the other group is full of friends of McGuanago athletics FOMA is actually uh, uh, an arm of the booster club and they're a capital improvement uh, group so they do big projects Right? They're raising money for, for, for big stuff. Started in 2013, and since then they've raised about $1.7 million uh, for McGuanago Athletics uh, projects. Uh, some of the projects that they've covered, um, the first big one was the fitness center. Uh, they raised the money for our, not new anymore, new in 2013, uh, fitness center. After that, they constructed uh, the MHS softball diamond. Uh, they did locker room renovations. Um, they put in the turf uh, out on the football field. They created a shot put uh, area that they paid for, and they also uh, funded the main entrance to the track and football stadium. So they've done a lot of uh, a lot of great things. Uh, the other thing they do annually is they, they uh, provide scholarships um, for our senior athletes. So we get five scholarships, five five hundred dollar scholarships each year, uh, and we uh, raffle those off. Uh, at our scholar athlete program, which I'll talk about in just a second. So for ticketing um, and live streaming, we contract with a company called Just a Game. They're out of Wisconsin Dells. Uh, they have both platforms for us, which is really nice. Um, I was going to hop onto, actually, I will uh, go back to our website just to show you where it is again. It's a good refresher. So back to the website. Back to schools, McGuanago High School, activities, and we go to athletics, and these links over here, MHS events live streaming, MHS events ticketing. I click on the ticketing. It usually updates weekly what we got going. So the next thing we got uh, tomorrow, a girls soccer match uh, against Waukesha North. If you want to attend that, you click buy tickets here. And the nice thing about this, obviously you buy your tickets ahead of time, they're on your phone, you walk in, you scan them, and you're in. Uh, they're really popular during the football season when we had some, some really large crowds, people like that, uh, that they didn't have to wait in line to buy tickets. Uh, they, could, they could get in much quicker. So uh, that's been a, a positive uh, going with just a game. And then live streaming really started um, due to COVID. Uh, nobody was live streaming there, uh, or very few people anyway, their, their live stream, or, uh, live streaming their, their high school athletic events and then COVID kind of forced that because we didn't have crowds so we kind of learned how to do it. Now we're live streaming uh, and we're, we're even making money on it so it's pay-per-view now for our, our varsity level stuff but uh, part of that is our crowds uh, have gone down a little bit because people really like to sit at home on the couch and watch a football game when the weather's crappy and uh, so we're going to charge you for that but um, that's really been a positive as well. I just mentioned our scholar athlete program. Uh, students, you're gonna to wanna to shoot for this. Uh, to qualify as a scholar athlete, uh, you need to have a 3.25 GPA, that's your cumulative GPA, so it keeps going, uh, adding up uh, each year. Um, so for freshmen, it's that first semester uh, next year, uh, you wanna have that 3.25 GPA and then be participating in at least one uh, MHS athletic offering. We do a program every spring where we bring all of our scholar athletes together this year we have 432 uh scholar athletes which is which is amazing i, I haven't kept track of the, the numbers over the years but i think this is definitely one of our largest groups uh each year the kids get awards uh, and the awards you know vary in uh in coolness i suppose but uh, freshman year they get a patch uh it used to be you put that patch on your letterman's jacket but those aren't uh, all that popular these days but now the patches go in a shadow box or you display them at graduation parties or whatever mom and dad like to have those uh, mom especially uh sophomore year you get a medal junior year you get a t-shirt and then senior year you get a really nice plaque uh, as a scholar athlete um and at that uh, senior year scholar athlete banquet that's where we draw those foma 
uh, scholarships. We also have a coaches scholarship for $1,000, uh, one for a male athlete, one for a female athlete. So we have two $1,000 scholarships and then five uh, $500 scholarships, which uh, are fantastic as part of our, our scholar athlete program. I wanted to mention that we have uh, training services provided here. It's a picture I took of our head trainer, Jason Aples, about 15 years ago. Uh, so he looks a little different than this now, maybe he maybe aged a little bit. Uh, but Jason is, is definitely, uh, in my opinion, and, and some of the coaches who have been other places, uh, he's the best in the business. He is really, really good. Uh, he is here daily after school. So the end of the school day comes, he's here, he's taping kids, he's doing rehab with our kids. Uh, he, he's really an expert on, uh, on sport and on sport injury, injury prevention. Uh, he helps us with that, that type of stuff as well. Um, provided by Pro Healthcare, I always tell our parents, if your son or daughter has an injury of some sort, make certain, I mean if a bone is sticking out or whatever, obviously you're going to bring them to the ER, but make certain if, it's, if they have an injury of some sort that they see Jason first. Uh, he's going to be the, the best as far as analyzing what it is and then he's going to let you know uh, if you need to bring uh, your son or daughter to a doctor uh, or he might refer you if there's a specialist uh, that he thinks you should see. But again, Jason's fantastic. Uh, we have another trainer, Nicole Arnold. I don't have her picture, uh, but she's here uh, kind of on a part-time basis when we have multiple events. Um, Jason and Nicole, at vir virtually every varsity event we have and a lot of our lower level events, uh, they are present at those events as well. So if we have an injury, uh, they're Johnny on the spot uh, helping, helping our student athletes with those things. So that's pretty much the end of, of this portion uh, so what we're going to do now, and I hope, I hope it, was, it was beneficial for you, and I thank you all for coming, but what we're going to do now is we're going to do our breakout uh, sessions. A number of us are going to be uh, just out here in the, in the foyer area. Uh, the athletic office, myself and Mrs. Warnes will be out there. Boys and girls cross country, girls golf, uh, boys soccer, and in girls swim, uh, Coach Carlson, we, we co-op and swim uh, with Waukesha South. They have a pool, we don't, so we go there to swim. Uh, for boys, we actually go to uh, Waukesha West. But anyway, Coach Carlson, who's our coach, he's out of state. So he wasn't able to be here, but if you have a, a young lady who's interested in swimming, I have a sign-up form on his table. If you just fill that out, uh, and I will shoot that to him. It's your student's uh, email and your email, and then he will share some information with you uh, about the upcoming season. Uh, cheerleading with Coach uh, Stadler down here, she's raising her hand. Uh, she's gonna bring you guys to room 132. Uh, girls tennis, Coach Wurzbicki in here? Coach Wurzbicki's back there with his hand up. Uh, he's gonna use his classroom, which is 126. Girls volleyball, uh, Coach Bone, we're here with her hand up. Uh, she's gonna bring you to room 134. Boys volleyball, Coach Kopeski, with his hand up, he's gonna bring you to room 133. And then football with Coach Ganevak, you guys are going to stay in here uh, for his portion. And then I'm told uh, dance is going to do their parent meeting after tryouts. So if you're a, a dancer, uh, that's when that parent meeting would, would take place. All of our other meetings for our winter sports and our spring sports, usually the, our coaches are doing those during the school day. So either during our flex session on Wednesday, they meet with the kids for a sign up or sometimes they'll do it after school. Uh, but we're already in school then, so it's a lot easier to get the information uh, to the kids, but we thought tonight it would be important uh, to get our fall uh, quick uh, parent meetings for our freshman families. So with that, I'm going to conclude. Uh, you can go to your breakout sessions. I'm going to go to my table, and if you have any questions, come see me. Thank you.